Hello, I'm Carrie Sundra of Alpen Glow Industries, and I'm going to talk to you today about a new product called the Switch Trick. So it is basically a switching power supply that is tricked out to be totally compatible with the solderless breadboard. Um, so I'll point out a few things first and then delve into details. So uh, basically uh, I've designed it so that it has um, a jumper configurable voltage output. So it only outputs one voltage, but you can set a jumper so that it can be 1.8, 2.5, 3, 3.3, 3.7, 4.2, 5, and or 6 volts out. And then there's even this little adjustable bit where you can solder your own resistor there and basically make it be any output voltage you want between 0.9 and 6 volts. Um, voltage input, there are several different options here. Uh, you can use a normal power jack and plug it into a wall wart or power it off of a 9 volt battery. USB, of course, 5 volts, and a JST PH connector that is compatible with a lot of lithium ion batteries. And these three are all diode protected, so you know, you can uh, accidentally plug in two at once. Um, the other thing is that these two uh, pads right here and here are uh, totally alligator clip compatible. And uh, that is a direct input. It is not diode protected. Uh, 3 to 17 volts uh, is what it takes in. It is a step down power supply, so the input voltage has to be greater than the output voltage. Uh, what else? It has an on-off switch, which is very nice, and a little LED lights up to let you know whether it's on or off. Uh, it also has the enable and power good pins broken out in case you want to hook it up to a microcontroller. And uh, it also has this slightly offset um, uh, like power rail uh, pattern on that end. And uh, I don't know if you're like me, but I have a ton of different breadboards. Some are kind of cheap ass breadboards and they're just like a little bit off on those power rails. They're kind of like, anyway, they're just a little bit off. So um, the last thing is you can see some patterns, some footprints right there. Uh, you can solder headers onto those and use them as diode bypass jumpers. So if you really don't want that diode drop on your input voltage, you can solder in a header, just put a little shunt uh, jumper across it, and you won't have that diode drop. Of course, do that at your own risk, because at that point, if you plug in two voltage sources, uh, they will fight it out for dominance, and one of them will win. All right. So uh, I can show you what it looks like on a board here. So these have the headers soldered in. Oh, it does come, it basically comes like this, like you see here with a little header kit. So you have the header that you can break apart to, um, to basically solder the uh, voltage rails. And then it has a couple little jumpers. You can also use that for the diode bypass if you want to if you want to hook those up. And then these two are board supports that just snap into these large holes here. And that's handy because um, sometimes you just want to like hang this off of the edge of your breadboard like this, just plugs right in. And this makes it nice and supported, especially for like plugging and unplugging connectors from there. So we'll zoom out the other way a little bit. Um, I am just, I've just hooked this up here to a little voltmeter. So the voltmeter is getting power from that guy right now and just using a nine volt battery. Awesome. All right. 0, 0.0 volts. We're off and we're not, not doing anything. So we can turn it on and the jumper is set to 1.8 volts. So you'll see this has only like one digit of precision there. So um, the output voltages are, are reasonably accurate. They're they can be off by about um, 20 to 50 millivolts, um, you know, variation within the batch, depending upon the resistors. They are 1% resistors, but still there's only so much you can do. So um, any, in any case, you might see, it might appear to be a 10th off, but it's really a little bit less than that. So that's at the 1.8 volt setting. Change it to 2.5 volt setting. There you go. And then three volts. Three point three. 
3.7. Um, this one I included because it is sort of nominal lithium ion battery voltage. So if you wanted to kind of simulate that you were using a lithium ion battery, but without having to have it actually be battery powered, that's a good rail for that. Um, then this one is 4.2, which simulates the maximum charge of most lithium ion batteries. And then we got five volts, super handy rail. And then six volts, because basically that is the um, highest voltage output that that converter does. And it is a one amp converter too, by the way. So pretty useful for a variety of things. Um, there's an adjustable uh, one there too, so that you can solder in your own resistor and make whatever voltage you want. Uh, you'll notice that it syncs to uh, 0.8 volts if there's no jumper in. It doesn't really regulate there. That's just sort of the um, natural uh, voltage that the feedback loop kind of floats to. So we'll put it back to some discrete value there. So there you go, 2.9 volts, and I'll turn it off. And we'll float back down to zero. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, switching power supplies, I can just say a little bit about, about them. Um, the reason that they're cool is because they are very, very efficient. So that means that you can pull like a fair, um, fair current out of them without having to worry about uh, power loss or heat dissipation issues in your actual voltage converter chip. Um, so that makes them nice for battery powered operations where you don't want to be wasting a lot of power or it makes it nice for little compact uh, designs where you just don't want to have to deal with like dissipating a lot of heat. Um, that's about it. Uh, there's information at the bottom about where you can buy this and thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll probably do another little video actually that goes over the schematic for this. Um, there were some interesting, interesting parts of this design and you know, it's nice to learn about stuff. All right, till next time.